Welcome back. Yes, thank you for coming back. Oh, I hope somebody would come back. I've got a fantastic video today. It's called Seven Things About Germany That I Can't Get Used To, which is honestly, that's the most interesting 10 out of 10 title because I want to know. That's exactly what I want to know. Like what, if I moved to Germany, what would be the things that I was just like, that are so foreign, so alien, so different, that it would take me forever to even get used to it. This is a very widescreen, wide aspect ratio video. A uh, super shout out to this dude, Nalf, for this video. I mean, I haven't watched it yet, but I already know it's gonna be good. Let's watch. Guys, welcome back to the Nalf YouTube channel. Uh, if this is your first time here, welcome, a special welcome to you. My name is Nalf. Nick Alfieri. Mm. My nickname is Nalf. That's where we get the Nalf, okay? Gotcha. I am an American living in Schwabisch Hall, Germany, a small Perfect. town in southern Germany. I Look play at that, American. Though. Oh my gosh, there's nowhere in America you can go that looks anything like that. That is just straight up. That's a fact. We just don't have the history of this type of architecture. Incredible. Living in Schwabisch Hall, Germany, a small town in southern Germany. I play American football here for the Schwabisch Hall unicorns of the what? German- <laughs> Wait, what? Southern Germany, I play American football- This isn't even like part of the seven things, but you play American football in Germany, that's your job? All here for the Schwabisch Hall unicorns of the German football league. Now I've been here- That is the coolest job ever. On and off for about six years. So I have had a lot of experiences with culture shock and settling into a different country. And there are certainly things about Germany that kind of surprised me at first, but I have since gotten used to and they yeah. are just part of my everyday life and they don't seem like anything too crazy for me now. So what, what are some things you can't get used to about Germany? I assume this dude, on this, this is like back in time when he had long hair and put on five pounds. Um, I assume this is a different guy. His roommate, also from America. Oh, look down here, it says what my brother thinks. This is his brother. I can't get used to the no air conditioning. I can't get used to the- no, Wait, no air conditioning? Is that what he just said? I can't get used to the no air conditioning. I can't get used to the, the no spatial awareness. People <laughs> That's just rude. <laughs> okay, no air conditioning, period. So does that include heat or just just cooling? That's wild. How hot does it get in Australia? That's a that's how hot does it get in Austria? Not Australia, German. <laughs> wow. What? A, anyway, um, fifty-five degrees north. Okay, so fifty-five. To, um, there, see that. That can't be right. Nope, that's not right. All right, <laughs> I've already wasted enough time. <laughs> I have no idea, but that's wild. No AC. I assume it must not get to 100 degrees because here in Indiana, you wouldn't be able to function with no AC. People walk around as if they're the only person on earth and uh, I can't get What is that supposed to mean? Used to, oh. That is just a shot fired at the German population, wow. They just walk around like they're the only people. What? No spatial. I don't know what this guy's going on about. No, there's no customer <laughs> service that you walk into a store and they're mad at you for being there. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to give you my money. So <laughs> I think he's mistaking like the, I assume there's a different culture of they're not as um, social. They're not as loud. They're not as talkative to strangers. I, I've heard that, right? I, I know that. So I assume he's taking that as being bad customer service, which is funny. So, <laughs> what else? But there are things that even after- Maybe he was just completely joking. I don't know. After all these years, I still- I know, I'm thrown off. Cannot get used to about Germany. And okay, that is what we are list. going to be talking about Here we go. today. It's modern day. Elements of German society that are slow, barbaric, and outdated. I am looking at uh, some institutions such as banking that rely so heavily on uh, physical snail mail. My brother, being new in Germany, has been uh. trying to set up an online 
bank account. So he can do his banking online, see his account on his phone, etc. Some pretty standard stuff that should just be, you download an app, you get your information, you're right. good to go. It has taken him two months to be able to set up his online banking because in Germany... All right, Germans, you guys need to get that together because when I think of Germany, I think of scientists, advanced manufacturing, very efficient systems, cool architecture, like super advanced architecture. Um, so what's the deal with the with the snail mail like banking system? What? Germany, That's at least weird. with the banks that we use, you have to mail away some information. They mail you back a pin, you put it in, and then you have to wait another two or three weeks. There's still stuff in America like that, though. Honestly, like, I don't know, the DMV, which is the driving license people. Oh, my gosh. And it's this very, very strange, barbaric system that seems to be super clunky. And it, it just doesn't make sense for why a society like Germany still... That's what uh, I was basically thinking. feels like they live in the 1970s <laughs> or 80s when it comes to certain things like I wonder what the Germans have to say about that like what right, is that like offensive or is, is he just being honest online banking also there's just so much unnecessary snail mail like paper mail that you get in the mail and for a country that prides itself on being very environmentally conscious and environmentally mm, yeah. friendly I didn't even think about that aspect of it a lot of paper I am a little bit appalled at how that's a strong word much wasted paper there is just sending pointless letters and things in the mail. Okay. Something right, that it. I just Let's am get not to number getting two. used to. Okay, first or last. That's a very American saying. How fast people drive on the Autobahn. Woo! Uh, we go faster, dude. Did you, did you just okay? Nice. Okay, I thought this was the same dude. So this is the same channel from these guys. Yeah, I like these guys. Okay, I'm speed. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, that's good. That's fast. That's fast. Now Americans are always really interested in it and almost obsessed with the fact that you can go as fast as you want during certain stretches on the autobahn. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. a lot of Americans uh, are under the impression or have some sort of false impression about the autobahn that it's always no speed limits all the time. I've even heard some really weird images of the Autobahn. One of my friends told me that he thought the Autobahn was a big X that goes across Germany, a big highway of X highway that had no speed limits. Not really sure where that came from. I've also heard that the Autobahn is a I've never heard that. circular highway all around the country. Also really weird. But yeah, I've been driving on the Autobahn now for six years and uh, you know, I've gotten used to going much faster than I would typically go in the States. In the sta not in the rain, dude. Come on, we're not going 200 miles an hour in the rain, please. States, you're really going about 60, 65 miles per hour tops. Right. Well, 75 tops, really. Which, what is that in kilometers per hour? Maybe 110 or so? I don't know, my math's probably wrong. But since living in Germany, I've gotten used to going 160, 170 kilometers per hour, which is about a hundred miles per hour, something I would never do in the States. That is but amazing. I've gotten used to that. It's I mean, I've already reacted to the Autobahn. You can check out that. That's my first video. Uh, but that just is mind blowing. A hundred miles an hour, dude. I would feel like my car would begin to vibrate and probably take off. No big deal to be driving in the left lane, passing cars going 160 kilometers per hour. I'm used to that. But what I can't get used to is when I'm going 160 kilometers per hour, I feel like I'm really pushing it and I'm passing cars that another car, probably a BMW coming up behind <laughs> me, flashing his lights, is going 240, 260 kilometers per hour like it's Holy. no big deal. That is something that I cannot get used to. My tolerance for speed has certainly increased, but Holy I am not dude. used to how fast some of these native born Germans Holy are willing me. and comfortable to drive on the Autobahn. Okay, sorry to interrupt the content for a moment. It's just I'll time for a shameless on. plug. God, maybe okay. this channel okay. is support. I don't have to play this part because it's not my plug. <laughs> Guys, I've said it a thousand times. If you've watched my videos, you know this is one of the biggest things for every American who comes here is the physical distancing. The much smaller acceptable physical distance between people. You get it when you go to a grocery store or in line somewhere. I I've tried to get used to it that it's just it's a smaller threshold and people are used to standing closer to each other. It's a more densely populated country. Maybe that explains. Hmm. 
That is super interesting. So that's kind of at odds with, like, people are, so people in Germany are socially more distant, like, strangers. I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm a very shy guy, and I'm very reserved, very somewhat introverted. But overall, Germans are, from what I hear, more introverted. And, and you're not just going up to strangers being like, how are you? People do that in America. Like, how are you doing? <laughs> you know, like once in a while. Um, but they're cl physically closer together. Huh. It's why people are, are more tolerant of this, but it's something that I seriously feel very uncomfortable with still, cannot get used to. The other day I was walking out, just walking in Schwabisch Hall, uh, a whole town, you know, so much space for people to walk. I was walking, I felt somebody up right behind me and I almost, and I sensed that there was a body right on my hip and I thought that I was about to get robbed or pickpocketed. So I turned around like this and flinched and like kind of threw my hands up getting ready. No. And it was just some little old woman oh, gosh. who was following me this close and she was like so startled at my reaction but she kind of realized that i felt that she was too close to me but unless i reacted like that she wouldn't have thought anything of it it was totally normal for her to be just following somebody so close right in their personal space yeah here in america you would be i don't know you, you shouldn't do that to like the wrong person i don't know that would not be I mean, to most people, you know, most people would just think it was weird, very weird, uncomfortable. You'd be like, you'd be like, lady, back it up, okay, get out of my bubble. But um, the wrong person might try to pick a fight. <laughs> uh, something that I still cannot get. Or might think you're trying to pick a fight or something. Used to, and I don't think I ever. Not if you're a little old lady. Okay, I'm done. Will get used to. A personal bubble Interesting. comes from North America. It's a little bit wider. Didn't expect that. This one is actually something that I sometimes like and sometimes don't like. And it is that it stays lighter later, especially in the summer. I just looked it up. The sunset time for my hometown, Portland, Oregon, tonight is like 8.56 p.m. Whereas the sunset time here in Schwabish Hall is closer to 9.30. And that is still, you still have some light for about 30, 40 minutes after that sunset. So, so you can be outside playing the last hole on a round of golf at 10 p.m. At certain points in the year, huh? That is, I like that. I mean, I think that's cool. I love to go outside, so. Um, when the sun starts setting early here, I mean, the sun will set here at six o'clock uh, or five thirty uh, at, at at the shortest point of the year. Um, and I hate that. Oh, so if I'm like in bed and it's ten o'clock, I can look outside and the sky is still not pitch black. It's something that I, I still can't really get used to. Sometimes I weird, really like though. it. Say for example, if I'm out with friends or in the beer garden or something. And it's, you know, one of those summer evenings where you want to elongate the time. But sometimes when I'm trying to go to bed early and it's still, you know, not dark out at 10 o'clock, that is a little bit of a hindrance to my sleep patterns, which are so important to me. So this one sort of depends on... I can't tell when this guy is being sarcastic or not. He's like, it's so important to me. <laughs> like, he could be being completely sarcastic. Sleep patterns, which are so important to me. So this one sort of depends on what kind of mood I'm in, but the fact that it, you know, Germany is at a much higher, what is it? I can never remember. Is this la latitude? Latitude? It, it results in later sunsets. It's quite something that I am not used to. Now, when we were in Finland, we saw this to the even more extreme because I don't, it felt like it didn't get dark there until 1130 or so. And that was in April. So I would imagine now in June. Now there are, Alaska is the only state where you will see that. And uh, getting close to the actual summer, it would be maybe like midnight. So that's something that is sometimes good, sometimes bad, but I'm certainly not used to it. This isn't all negative, guys. And this one thing that I absolutely cannot get used to, but I love it. I'm glad it's not all negative, honestly. I'm tired of hearing the bleh, 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 bleh. mean stuff about Germany, you know? I think it seems like a super cool place. I want to hear the good things that you can't get used to. Like, oh my gosh, I just can't used, get used to 
uh, not going into medical debt. I don't know. Because it brings me so much joy every time is when I walk into a German bakery and I smell that smell mm. of the German baked goodness. Even that, I don't even know if that's real, like an actual picture of a German bakery, but that looks good. It's magical. I love good bread. Food. It is some. Oh my gosh, I need to try a German pretzel. How can I get my hands on like a legit German pretzel? thing that every time I go in there, it feels like it's the first time I've been in there. Uh, there is just something incredible about German bakeries. We just really don't have this level of baked goodness in the States, at least not on such a wide scale. It's for the most part, if you go into a German bakery, you know you're going to get some pretty high quality stuff. Mm. Uh, and the smell that I get when I walk in there makes me want to buy every I'm hungry, dude. single thing on the menu. I usually just stick to my typical butter pretzel. Perhaps I'll branch mm. out one of these days. But I love a good soft pretzel. The magical smell of a German bakery when you walk in is something that I cannot get used to, surprises me pleasantly every single time, and I hope that I never get used to it. <laughs> like Guys, Germans work really, really hard, okay? They have this reputation for being efficient and hardworking, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that is absolutely true, but Germans also have a lot of holidays where basically it seems like nobody's working. You've probably heard a million times about Americans it Sounds healthy. Uh, complaining about the fact that most things are shut down on Sundays. Now I'm past that point. I get it, I'm used to it. I can structure my week around everything being closed on Sundays. Mm. What is difficult though for me, however. The only thing closed here on Sundays is Chick-fil-A. Is it feels like there are so many holidays where I am not expecting, you know, I don't have it on my calendar. This is a holiday and everything's going to be shut down. Hmm. So recently, for example, it was the, uh, the Fingst Fest where everything's closed on Monday. I forgot to realize that, I guess. I would be screwed, man. I never plan ahead like that. I will literally go to the grocery store every day to get just what I want to eat for that day, like what I need to make dinner. So I knew everything was gonna be closed on Sunday, and then I tried to go to the store on Monday and realized, oh, it's a holiday, everything's still <laughs> closed. So when you run into these situations where there are two, sometimes even three days in a row where everything is closed, it's a little bit difficult for an American to get used to. You know, I've Imagine. fought and clawed and battled my way to getting used to everything being closed on Sundays. Uh, I am not used to there being multiple days in a row where everything is closed. Germans have <laughs> so many holidays and it feels like everybody's on vacation all the time, especially Lucky them. in summertime. Every time I talk to someone, I'm like, hey, how's work going? They're like, oh, it's good, but I'm on vacation right now. I'm on a two weeks vacation. You know, I'm going to uh, That's incredible. Greece tomorrow. And I feel like this is the most common conversation that I have with people when I ask them about their work. <laughs> Another positive one, guys, Good. is the exciting and relaxed, great vibes that you get in a small German town on a sunny Sunday. I've talked about it many times before, German Sunday culture, which is slow down, chill, relax, enjoy time with your friends and family. And walking around Schwäbisch Hall on a nice weather Sunday, it's just this experience that every single- It just looks incredible. I'm just looking at all the buildings the greenery, the people, it looks awesome. Single time makes me feel like I'm experiencing it for the first time. It's like, for some reason I forget that this is gonna happen. It's gonna feel like this on these Sundays. Uh, and I don't know why, I I'm not used to it. <laughs> and this is another thing that I, I don't want to get used to. I want to continue to wake up and walk around on a, a, you know, a late morning on one of these Sundays and be just pleasantly surprised and, and take it all in. Uh, on all these people sort of stopping in a collective way, sort of stopping, slowing down, and all enjoying life. You can just, you can just feel it. And it's something that I really- That is something I don't really, I think I'd honestly have to go there on a Sunday to understand, because that just sounds different. I really like, and I had just have not ever experienced this in the States on this level. All right, guys, so those are some things that I, as an American- Awesome. Well, once again, thank you, Nolf. 
I like the channel. I love the channel. I liked this video. It was fantastic to react to. Uh, go check out his channel. And thank you guys for watching. That was super fun. I hope you come back. And honestly, I hope you subscribe. But hey, even if you don't, I'm just glad you watched this video with me. That was fun. And I'll see you, well, tomorrow.